Hello YouTubers, welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. It's Saturday and that means it's time for a mail call. What do we got first, Micah? It's like a package from Michael Bernstein. 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 Michael Bernstein. What do we got? It's like a box. With the model in it. Nice. Okay, so this is a matchbox number 37 cattle truck. Um, and I've, I've got a few of these models. Um, and I've got some really nice mint condition uh, cars, but I don't have a box for them. Um, so this model came up. Obviously, the model's got some issues. You know, the plastic on the back is broken, like I think. Almost all of them are. Um, it's missing the tailgate. But uh, the cab and the chrome and almost everything else on this model is just beautiful. So it's really, it's probably in better shape than some of my intact models are. Um, so it's really a shame that, that that back end is busted. But the reason that I bought this was obviously not for the model. It was for the box. Uh, so this box looks like it's actually in pretty great shape. Um, there's just, you know, some slight wears, little tears starting on the corners there. But all the flaps are intact. Um, everything's attached. So I wouldn't call it excellent, but I would say this is a very good condition box. And uh, it's one that I don't yet have in my collection. So happy to find that one and get it at a reasonable price because the model that it came with wasn't great. So, um, super excited to have that. Up next, got a package from Thomas Page. Very well protected. Get it? No. Nope. There we go. Oh, beautiful. So I've got uh, a couple of these. Um, I've done a restoration on one of the uh, the offset carriers. Um, this is the number 37 carrier Bantam uh, Coke truck. Um, and as I've said in some of my earlier videos, I'm really trying to fill out some of the earlier parts of my collection, uh, some of the Moco Lesney models. And uh, these Coke trucks are incredibly collectible um, because Matchbox guys like them, Coke collectors like them, um, and their pockets seem to be a lot deeper than the die cast folks. So the price of these always seems to go a little nuts. And uh, the first one I found, the reason I got such a good deal on it was it was an overpaint. And I was actually able to go through and uh, restore that model back to the original kind of reddish yellow or orangish yellow um, piece. But uh, it was, as I said, it was an offset load. And I have not had any of the uniformly loaded models. And these are actually usually uh, easier to find, I think. Um, but for this particular model, there are so many different variants and uh, they made it for so long. And one of the things that I didn't yet have in my collection was one that was a metal wheel. Um, I've got a black wheel, I've got a silver plastic wheel, which is usually pretty hard to find as well. Um, but I really wanted an earlier model that had the uh, metal wheels on it. So, um, watched for a long time, uh, followed this auction, and a couple even re-listings on this, and uh, the price finally got down. I think I paid $10 with free shipping for this model. Um, so, super excited to get that one. You know, the decals aren't in great shape, but they're the original ones, and they're mostly there. The ones on the top actually look 
a little bit better. Um, and this one, I don't think I'll probably do anything to. I think it's rough, but um, I think, you know, it's good enough condition and it's one of the older variants that I don't have. So this one's probably going to go straight into my collection, just how it is. I'm going to enjoy it. Up next, got a package from Dave Roche. I think that's how you say that. Oh, I think it made me split out. All right, so this is another one of those uh, earlier models uh, that I've been after. Um, this one actually got a uh, pretty decent price on it because uh, some child at some point in the past has kind of added that green racing stripe right down the, uh, the cab, the hood, and the uh, boot, as my UK viewers would call it. Um, but excited to get it. It's one of the uh, Austin A50s, uh, Moco Wesney. This is their number uh, 36. Um, and it has the tow hook intact. It's a little bent upwards, but it's intact. It's all still there. Um, and as I said, I've really been trying to fill out some of these earlier models. Um, they're harder to find. They seem to be more expensive. Um, I got a really uh, pretty, I think, pretty good deal on this one because of the condition and the paint. Um, and this one may actually be one that I might attempt a restoration on. Um, I, I am uh, still looking for some nicer versions of these and they do come up periodically I'm following a couple right now to see if uh, those might be better so I might keep this for now but if I ever get a, a duplicate or a better condition version of this Austin A50 um, I'll probably go ahead and restore this one so now we got a package from Damon Tyler Damon Tyler what do we get? Get it? Mm, I don't know. Mm, be really super careful with that one. Okay. So this has been a model that I've been looking for for a really long time. Um, they come up just every so often it seems like and uh, Usual starting price on these, I think, is about 50 or 60 bucks. Um, these, this is one of the, um, I think they call them the first five or first six. This is one of the uh, original Moco Lesney models. Um, this is the Milk Wagon. And uh, as you can see, this one's in pretty decent shape. Um, all the wheels are intact. Uh, the horse has a little bit of paint wear um, on the side where it, you know, rubs on the, the leads on it. Um, you can see the uh, Made in England by Lesney. So not all these earlier models were uh, numbered in the casting. Um, or maybe this one is down inside someplace where where I can't see it yet. But, oop. but um, this one has all the bits and pieces to it. Uh, it's not missing the driver, the forks aren't bent or anything on the um, on the horse, and uh, as I said, I'm I'm trying to fill out those early parts of my collection right now, and uh, this is this is a great great find for me. Um, I did pay up a little bit on this, a little bit more than I usually do, um, but I still paid significantly less than what these models usually go for. So I was excited um, to get that, excited to come across this piece. Um, and because it's so old and so valuable, 
it's going to go in my collection just exactly how it is. And I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it because I think it's just so cool. And last but not least, international priority. This is Royal Mail, so we got, again, okay. I'm, I'm picking the pockets of my UK viewers and collectors. So up here. Oh, I remember this one. So I know that there's a lot of collectors out there that do just uh, military models. Um, I actually followed a sale recently that had uh, one of every single one of the military models in the regular wheels that uh, Matchbox made. And uh, I think there was like 10 or 12 models all together. Um, and it sold for over $90, um, which is just crazy to me. Um, I'm guessing maybe it was, you know, somebody that does the, the war games or the war miniatures. Um, a lot of these uh, kind of role-playing tabletop war games or action games. They like having the uh, period correct troop transformers and tanks and, you know, all the different military vehicles. And uh, I think these guys must have a lot deeper pockets than... Uh, most of the die-cast collectors do because they definitely pay up for some of these models. Um, but this one, um, and I've, I've been slowly building out my military uh, collection. Um, and I've got a troop transport and a couple different uh, models. But this one came up and it is the uh, personnel carrier. Um, and I think it's a number, what is that? Number 54, 56. Yeah, it's 54. 54. Um, but I got this for $4. Uh, I thought that was a steal. That was a good price on this model. You know, it's got all the high surface wear. It's very play-worn. Um, somebody loved this, this little piece. But, uh, you know, if I had this when I was a kid, I'd have been driving it through the mud. I'd have been out playing in the, the dirt and the ditches and, you know, building berms and everything else for this to hide behind and having some really incredible battles out there in uh, in the playground. So excited to find that one um, and to get a really good price on it. So not in bad shape. That'll certainly go right in to complete or fill a hole in my uh, military collection. That's going to do it for our mail call this week. Um, as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a like. Uh, shoot me some comments below. Let me know what you enjoyed, what you'd like to see in the future. And uh, as always, click that subscribe button so you can keep up with us, uh, get notified of all of our future content, and be able to join us next week when we do another Vintage Diecast Restoration.